welcome to another edition of Potluck, your anything and everything talk and entertainment TV show. My name is Laura Hartman, and I am your host. Today, we have a very special guest joining us who owns a pet sitting company in Prince William County. I've used her services for over eight years, and I've been extremely happy with them. I highly recommend them. So please welcome to the show, Catherine Blake. Welcome Thank to the show, Catherine. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you. Good. So today we're going to talk about your business, which is called Make My Day, Please. And I am one of your very, very happy, happy clients. Thank you so much. You saved me from having to find somebody to take care of my pets every time I go away. Right. And you're very popular. People have interviewed you and covered your company. Like on NBC's Channel 4 and other local medias, which is really cool. Let's go back to the beginning. When did you start your pet business? And when did you start Make My Day Please and why? Okay, so in a nutshell, I started uh, Make My Day Please in 2009. I had been a high school guidance counselor. I got my master's in counseling in 2002 and I was in the county. And then in 2009 is when they de-staffed, the, the budget was terrible. And they, I was, I was the AP coordinator at that time. I was used to loot. I wasn't doing the counseling that I had originally started doing. And they were going to transfer me to Woodbridge High School, which was across the county. Okay. So I have such a love for pets. And I did, back then there was a real need. And I just, and I know how it was with our kids, because we had two dogs and three cats. And I was like, you know honey, I would love to be able to let people do what they have to do and what they want to do and know that they don't have to worry about their kids, their pets, because we were in the same situation. And thank God for my husband, because he let me quit my job in the county and start this pet sitting business. And I obviously couldn't have done it without him. And if I hadn't been transferred, I probably wouldn't have started it. So blessings, you know, in in times of difficulty. So, uh, So in 2009, we started it. Uh, he runs the canine unit for Prince William County Police. So, oh, okay. we, have, uh, so we have his dog and we have a, a rescue pit and we've had a couple of dogs that we've lost over the way. But um, so that's basically the reason that I started it in okay. the beginning. It was it was just me and, and he helped out when his schedule allowed. And within a couple of years, we, we really grew. I, I think our biggest growth spurt was... 2016 to 2017, where our revenue went up 300%. Wow. Wow. That period. Yeah. So I started with one employee helping me probably in about the first year and she and I would split the jobs. And then I grew to maybe five or six the next couple of years. And then pre pandemic, we were up to 30 pet sitters on our team. Wow. Wow. So when you first started, were you just doing your local area or did you cover more areas in Virginia, Northern Virginia? Well, I, you know, I have, I have clients when I'm interviewed always ask me, you know, like what makes us different, what sets us apart. And we have an excellent reputation, which I'm very, very proud of. We have uh, over 244 five-star reviews online across various platforms, like 75 on Google, I think, and Facebook and bark.com. And the reason for that is when I started this business, well, first of all, it was just me. And so I had to keep a radius. And as we grew and as we had more sitters, I wanted to make sure I could get to every job in 15, 10 to 15 minutes. So we have never expanded outside of the original area that we service and we never will. I think that's been a huge part of our success. We are never drawn too thin. We always can cover in the event of an emergency that a sitter has. We have plenty of people in the area, so we won't go to Centerville. People ask us to go to Woodbridge. So no, we have not expanded and I, I never will. I really feel like having that, that tight grip on this area, you know, I mean, if, if we had some, if we had a couple clients in Centerville and I had one sitter in Centerville and she got sick, right? I can't get to Centerville in 15 minutes. And so it's, I think that's been a big part of our success. So no, we have not expanded. We've stayed with just the Gainesville, Bristow, Haymarket, part of Manassas and uh, Nokesville. I'm in Manassas. I I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Like we don't go all through Manassas, like to that Woodbridge part. So I think that's been important. And in 2016, we were the only pet sitting business named best pet sitter in Northern Virginia by Northern Virginia Magazine. 
yeah. which is amazing because we cover such a small part of Northern Virginia. <laughs> Northern Virginia. Yeah. I was beyond the moon, obviously, but I, that's my team. I, I, I don't take the credit for it. It's, it's, I have an amazing As you team. Know. Was As it you know. hard to find people to come and work for you to do the pet sitting? I, I know people, there are a lot of people that love animals, but it is time consuming and plus you're, you know, going from house to house and having to, you know, get adjusted to the animals. Yes, um, that is another reason I think that we've been successful. It's the sitters. I've never hired anyone in between jobs. I've never hired someone who is like, I, I can walk a dog. I'm like, oh, no. Um, so the sitters and so finding the right person, that's the most important thing, because that sitter is my face. It's my company's face. So yeah. the sitter has to have a ridiculous love of animals, like has to be able to handle a crate with diarrhea in it or a scared dog. And not be like, oh, geez, you have to have that compassion. So that's first and foremost. Second, this has to be fit in their future for the foreseeable future. Like, so we have a lot of stay at home moms. That's why I say not in between jobs. We have very little turnover over the last 11 years. Very little, as you, you know. Yeah. We have clients yeah. that have been using us for 10 years every summer and Christmas when they go on vacation just consistently. And they usually end up with the same sitter. So, and then of course we do the background check and all of that. So, you know, I grew at such a pace where I think that that was okay because I didn't explode at any point, you know, and, um, and then word of mouth. And I would usually talk to my clients and I had a lot of clients who would say, you know, I know someone who, who was looking, I did have one client that she's like, my neighbor's son, he would be great. Could I have him call you? And I said, well, Elaine, is he, is he great? And she's like, yeah. And I said, well, you know what I need by great. I mean, yeah. really reliable, dependable, loving animals. And she's like, never mind. I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> so she, she's no, she's like, no, actually, I, I can't attest to all of that. You're right. Never mind. So I'm just very, very, very picky, but we have an amazing team. So I get the same person every time and she's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I know, she, I mean, she really takes care of my cats and knows. Like, I'm very particular, especially, I just lost one of my cats, but. Um, Sorry. Yeah, but but he had kidney disease. And so with the kitties that have, you know, or even dogs that have health issues, you've got to be more particular about their diet and making sure they have enough water and so forth. So, you know, I've been really happy with your service as far as like what, when I put a list out of what I want to happen, it happens. Because yeah. it's um, that, That's the other, yeah, we're very, we, we love notes. In fact, clients will be like, sorry, there's a lot of notes. And we're like, we love notes. We love <laughs> notes. We just want to do exactly. And we take care of a lot of thick animals that look like diabetic or right. special food or ear issues, you know, um, things like that. So we're, we're comfortable with that. And I think it's Linda who takes care of your kids, right? Yes. Yes, exactly. And I love her. She's amazing. But I'm like super happy because like everything, you know, to the T as far as the directions and nothing gets left out. And, you know, it's not like they give too much food or, you know, or forgot to do something. Right. <laughs> so, and everything's kept nice and clean. So I'm really, really happy with your services. Like, Thank, you. Really happy. Thank you. Yeah. So how has it been, you know, when COVID started like almost a year ago, how did things pan out then? Because, you know, there are a couple months where people weren't really going anywhere. Well, and you know, it's, it's definitely been difficult because we depend on people going to work yeah. back to college yeah. on vacation on weekend getaways. So it's definitely um, been a struggle. We, we do live in an area, pet care became essential early on, thank goodness. And we were waiting to find that out. So we have a lot of essential workers in this particular area. So we didn't lose as many clients as you might lose in another type of area. We have a lot of government workers. So we were able to maintain. Oh, good. Um, okay. Yeah. And then we, had, we even had um, probably about 10 clients that are regular um, midday dog walking clients that can, wanted to continue to pay us so we could okay. pay the sitter yeah. for months. And I sent them all an amazing gift. Um, which was just super sweet. I mean, was, we have loyal clients. They didn't want their sitters to be hurting. Oh, that's so sweet. And we started doing um, nail trimming. Oh, okay. okay. So that was something we hadn't done. So we would go, we go to the houses with our masks on and do, do the nail trimming. So we added services. We also took advantage of the financial opportunities out there, you know, through the, the state and the government and the sitters were able to, to do some unemployment benefits. So, 
so far we haven't we haven't lost anybody oh that's great yeah i think everyone's managed um a lot of our sitters this isn't their main and only income meaning a stay-at-home mom for example and then with the benefits so everybody it's and it's you know it's starting to come back and it just sort of wavers but i feel like i'm fortunate that we were big enough that we could take the hit yeah if we had been a lot smaller, it would have been harder because we can manage on 30 to 40% of what we were doing before. Right. Wow. Well, that's great. And so have there been any clients that were worried about, you know, bringing COVID or, you know, from, from any. Oh, your- sure. Oh, sure. Absolutely. And we take all those precautions, which we, we, you know, and we had that on our website, letting them know. Okay. Um, and we have the gloves and we wear the masks and, and we do the, the sanitizing and, when we do meet and greets, um, we're all wearing our masks and taking all the precautions. So absolutely. And I'm sure there probably are some clients that would have loved to use us, but are too afraid to have anybody in their house, you know, sure. those, but, um, but the ones that call us, obviously there, there's different forms. Some are like, I don't even want to wear a mask. You don't have to wear a mask. And then, you know, others are just like, so it just depends. And we, we accommodate whatever they want and, and the sitters take their own precautions as well. Okay. Okay. Were, was there any concern about, you know, cause I know like a while back, especially hearing stories, of what was going on in China back, you know, a year ago in March where people were throwing their pets out the window, you know, because they were scared that their pets got COVID. Have you had any concerns about that? With, with Thank that? goodness. No. And also maybe that goes to like, some people will say, well, what do you do about aggressive dogs, mean dogs? And I'm like, you know, clients who have aggressive and mean dogs aren't going to call us because they don't want that liability. So right. the people that, that call us and use our services, they love their dog. These are their kids. This is family. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so luckily that is not going to be in my sphere. And to be honest, when I see something that hurts my heart like that, on yeah. um, Facebook flying by, I just try to, uh, cause it, it'll just, it'll ruin m- my week, you know? So luckily I, 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 we didn't have any, anything like that at all. That's good. That's good. But it was a concern. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. No, I, I mean, thank God we didn't hear too much more after, you know, I think it was like a month of hearing that and it's like, oh my gosh, but I've heard from other people where, you know, can a person contact COVID through their dog or their cat, you know, but I don't, you know. Anyway. And there, there hasn't really been anything conclusive. And that is something as a, as a pet sitting business owner, I monitored and I cringed when I saw it. I'm like, oh, this is just what we need. But it never seemed to, to get energy. An issue. Yeah. Yeah. So for those who are concerned, I know like, you know, when, when I did my interview with you, I had to give you my vet information and emergency contact and all that. So, so when somebody decides to hire you or decides that they want to check out your service, what are the steps for them? What are they, what are, what are the steps for them to take? Well, once they, you know, whether it's a Google search or, or a recommendation from a friend, once they contact us, they'll send a contact for more information and right. we set up a meet and greet and there's no charge for that. And I bring the, the sitter with me. And we go over everything then, you know, everything from which rooms are off limits, um, residence notes, do we bring in the mail? Do you leave the Alexa on the TV, switch up the lights, switch up the curtains and like she had the emergency contact and all of that. We do all of that at the meet and greet and we go to the client's home. I find it funny. Sometimes clients will say, do you come to me or do I go to you? (laughs) We're definitely coming to you. Um, and, you know, I pay the sitter. I don't charge the client. Um, so that's that's how we set it up. Um, and it's it's pretty thorough. Where do we put the poop bags? Um, you know, and we always ask to have an alternate way to get in. Like if it's a key that if we right. can have a key so that I can have one in the office in the event that the sitter has a flat tire somewhere, I can get there. Hence my 10 to 15 minute. Um, and I don't do much of the sitting anymore. Uh, my team does. So I keep myself available for emergencies. Okay. You know? Okay. Well, that's, that's great. I, I know you guys have a copy of my key. So right. if I ever lock myself out, I can. Oh, that has happened. We've had clients that that has happened. Right, right, right. What are some challenges that you guys face right now? Or, or I mean, since you've started even? Well, I guess that 
the challenges have really been this year with the, with the pandemic and, you know, have, losing so, so much business has been, been really tough there for a while. And it always seems to work out. It was a challenge worrying, like, we need to hire more sitters. Like, and we never need more than one or two when it happens. You know, it's like, oh, Julie and I see it, you know, when we're like, we need one or two. Right. But somehow it always seemed to work out. So that's a challenge starting to worry. Um, luckily, I've never had to turn a client away, even as we were growing this, it just works out. But that's something that that you worry about um, is, is growing too fast. Um, luckily I didn't really worry about not having the business. I worried about not having enough sitters, but again, it just always worked out either someone knew someone that's a perfect fit. So that was good. I mean, a challenge, a a real challenge is when we have that inclement weather. Oh, right. Right. That's a challenge. The ice lately, I'm sure that's that's a real challenge. So yeah. When we know something really crazy is coming, like this past Thursday, uh-huh. Julie will contact everyone that she knows, maybe they're out of town, and we'll find out there, make sure they have an emergency contact, and we'll be in touch with the emergency contact if we can't get there. Okay. Um, we only cancel all of our visits if the government closes, but okay. even in that event, If the client needs services, they know to let us know and we will make every effort um, to get there, whether it's a different sitter or me with my Jeep, um, we'll do whatever we can to get there. But if we know it's someone who's out of town, we have that planned in advance with the client to make sure that nothing happens. Oh, good. Oh, good. But I do worry that the sitter is going to be like, you know, most sitters can get to their jobs. One sitter can't. And it's like, oh, challenge. Yeah. Have you ever had a case scenario where somebody wasn't able to get to the house? To- yes. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. We had one sitter, one of these storms within the last month or so, her, her car skidded off. She had to have it towed. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. She obviously, but, but you know, the clients are, are really nice and cool. I understand. Um, yeah. you know, and, and I'll have like a sitter say, I'm running 30 minutes late because there's a backup on the parkway or whatever. And I said, just contact the client. They understand, you know, we just don't yeah. want to get there 30 minutes late and never say why. And like, right. just let right. them know you're running late because of this, or the dog had diarrhea in the crate and you had to clean it out. I said, you know, just, just be honest with the client. They're, they understand. Um, yeah. And so, and it, like I say, we have other sitters. So in some cases, another sitter would go do that job if the sitter couldn't, which is rare. Okay. Um, it's, it's actually very rare or I I'll do it. Like I said, I keep myself available. I, I like to give the jobs to the sitters because I need to take care of my sitters. Yeah. Yeah. And it is good that you keep it in a, a smaller local area. Like you were saying. Exactly. In the there. Again, that's a good reason. Yeah. 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 So when I go away, I usually ask uh, the pet sitter to take photos or to like send me a text to make sure everything's okay. So she's perfectly fine with that. But do, do you find that a lot of the pet sitters are asked to do that? <laughs> oh, absolutely. And when we started, we didn't really have texting or it wasn't a big thing. Right. So we would always leave notes instead. But now it's pretty much everybody gets a text after each visit and we send pictures. Yeah. That, that's just that's just like a given now. That's evolved I think, well, for me, because my pets are like my babies, so I, know. <laughs> I need to make sure that they're, you know, that they're not fighting or they're, you know, that, that they're good. So trust me, everybody, I mean, for most people, the pets are, are you know, they're, they're family. They're, you know, you spend yeah. more time with your pets than probably anyone else in your life. Right. And right. especially a lot of alone time with your pets. There's a closeness, there's a bond there that. Oh, yeah. It's magic. Yeah. It's magic, you know, it definitely yeah. is. Yeah. So. so when somebody calls in and you don't cover their area, are there sister or, you know, brother pet sitting companies that you refer to? I do. I belong to a couple pet sitting networks <laughs> and there's one that's, um, well, there are a couple of them. One's international, one's national, but oh. one's local and it's national capital area pet sitters. And they, that, is a group of us that are Maryland, Virginia, and I think parts of DC. So oh. they 
all of Virginia, like McLean, which is an area we don't cover. So I'll quickly go to the uh, that that website and put in their zip code and see who the person on the phone that I don't cover and see who covers that. And I mean, to be honest with you, I know these people and there's some I wouldn't recommend, and you know, but I, 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 I'm very careful. So I'm like, oh, absolutely. Here you go. And I'll give them the website. I mean, I do that for strangers who call me. I'll get on. I'm like, I don't know anybody in that area, but let me get on. And I try to be very helpful for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So do you ever come across people who are new with having pets and they're not sure what to do you know, when they get away or how the pets are taken care of, do you give like tips? Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of people, they, they aren't sure. They're like, well, how does this work? And I mean, I think one of the biggest things is people be like, well, how much is it per day? And I have to explain, well, it's, we charge per visit, not per day, you know? So if you are a cat client and only need one visit, then it's the price for whatever visit length you need. But if it's um, dogs that need two to four visits a day. And that just depends on the client and the dog and the situation. Most dog clients do three visits a day and we offer various blocks of time. So maybe the dog loves to walk in the morning and you do a longer one in the morning. And then at bedtime, it's just a hug and a kiss and a potty break for 10 minutes. So you can change up the the blocks. So that's when I come across a lot. What is it per day? And I'm like, that just completely depends on how many. So, so that's something that a, a new a new place. Um, and a lot of people don't like to take their pets to, to kennels. And of course, for some people, kennels are great. Those aren't people we run into much because that's why they're calling us. Uh, two different clients we've had to go pick up while they were out of town, go pick up their pets and bring them back to our house to keep while they're away because the pets weren't eating and were, were sick and awesome. sad. And yeah, so it's, wow. it's a stressful environment. It's very noisy. Uh-huh. For them, um, but again, you know, some people it works for, some people it doesn't, and that's where that's where we come in. Okay, so before I I I started using you guys, I had used another woman who, you know, she was very nice, but there I think she had a lot of personal stuff going on in her life, and uh, one of my cats got out, and it happened to be around New Year's, and so there were like fireworks going off, and so she ran off, and she didn't know that she was even gone. Oh. Yeah. And so, I um, mean, you know, I came back and I'm like, where's my cat? <laughs> you know? And, and so I think the cat had gotten out like a couple days before. And so, you know, she helped me put up, she felt really bad and helped me put up signs and stuff. And like five days later, I finally, you know, we, we found the cat. We had somebody because I put up signs, you know, with, with her photo up, thank God. And it was, <laughs> I'll never forget because it was freezing freezing rain and cold but I was just going out putting oh, you were devastated yeah I mean it was uh it was it was such a horrible feeling <laughs> but since then I've, I've kept with your service because I know how reliable you are and you know these things you know it, it happens. these things can happen I'm going to find some wood that it hasn't happened I can't say that because we open every door as if someone's going to escape whether it's a crated dog or what because we had a job on the mountain and they had two little dogs up on Bull Run Mountain and they were crated. And we were, we, the sitter was going in every day. Well, one day she went in and they had escaped their crate and they oh ran God. out the front door. I think one of them escaped and let the other one out. And uh, so they took off, but, but they came back right away. But so, yeah, it okay. can happen, but we open every door like someone's going to escape. Um, but yeah, we really love garages if possible, because we can close it behind us before we go inside. Um, so we are ex- always aware of that. Like that's uh, yeah. just the first thing when you're at the door, you're just, just yeah. and we always make sure we see yeah. that before we leave. Yeah. We yeah. always make sure we have an eye on all the pets and that's more difficult with cats than dogs sometimes, but it's, um, it's a priority, you know, yeah. even if we know for sure they're in there, <laughs> yeah. we yeah. might find them. Well, what, what I did, what happened with me is that like, she didn't even notice. I don't think she even noticed that my cat was right. gone, you know, <laughs> so, but, um, you know, it happens, but thank you so much for, for of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to with you. So where can people find more information about you? you um, know? our website is make my day, please dot com pretty okay. simple um it was going to be make my day but i couldn't get that as a domain so it's make my day please yeah the, the please is the animal saying please make my day <laughs> uh, so it's make my day please.com we have a facebook page the make my day please um 
And then uh, you can email us at make my day, please at ymail.com. Okay. So, and is there a phone number that people can call? 703-624-3583. We have a lot of clients that are doing texting now too. Great. Okay. okay. Yeah. And uh, but our office manager handles things that come in through the email in a, in a flat. She's just so efficient. She's amazing. Oh, wow. Okay. And we'll put up on the screen, the areas that you do cover. So Again, thank you so much. I really of course, thank you. Thank you. Was nice to talking you. with you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're just tuning in now, or you want to catch up on some of the other episodes of Potluck, go to www.potluck-online.org, and we'll see you next time.